Good evening, graduates, teachers, and faculty of the college. It's an honor to be here today. As many of you know, I am the son of the infamous Stan Steckbauer. <laughs> I recall when I was a kid, and I'd be at my dad's program, wandering around the building, probably in some area I wasn't supposed to be in. <laughs> Invariably, someone would walk over and say, Hey, what are you doing here, young man? And I would simply reply, hey, I'm Stan's son. <laughs> and then they would apologize. <laughs> but uh, Stan Steckbauer, um, I, I have to brag on my dad a little bit. He served with distinction for the past 23 years at the NTC Learning Center, a program that he pioneered. The legacy of the Goal Lab, NTC, and Salvation Army is right before us today, found in the faces of those lives they've touched. I can certainly say that it's of God what is happening here today. For a great deal of time, I've been around the Goal Lab program as a child, as a teen, and young adult. And then later, fate would have it that I begin working at the Salvation Army Transitional Living Center. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I've been asked to share my story, which is a story of struggle, depression, and addiction. Yet it's also a struggle and a story of hope and triumph. I've learned something very simple in my struggles and trials, and it's this. There are two, we there are two ways to deal with a bad situation. One, I can allow it to define me. I can play the victim. I can use it as an excuse to drink and use drugs. Second, I can overcome that struggle. I can learn from that struggle. I can refuse to allow that struggle to define me. I can get to work on myself, my life, and my future to build something better. My story begins at age 16 when I was in a dark place in my life. I was bullied a great deal in school, and I had few friends. And my parents were going through a difficult divorce. I felt the strain at school, at home, and in my entire life. And I made the mistake of turning to prescription drugs to make the pain go away. I was expelled from high school after a string of events involving police, mental hospitals, and fears of a school shooting. I woke up in the mental hospital with no memory of what I'd done to find that I'd been expelled. All the students thought I wanted to blow up the school. No one would even talk to me, and I was alone. Shortly after this, I fell in with the wrong crowd a group of guys who got together and smoked weed and drank a great deal, and I started smoking cigarettes. In 2005, 
I was not a smooth criminal, just so you guys understand this. In 2005, I was arrested for drunk driving, disorderly conduct, and possession of THC. I went to jail for a month and came out a real mess of a person. Again, I ended up in jail and revoked from probation in 2006, and I got more charges in 2007. My life was starting to crash down around me. I was making all kinds of bad choices and getting bitter, resentful, and entitled. I was playing the victim. For many, including myself, this becomes a way of life. Hope for freedom eventually disappears, and there is no other world. Just the drug, the alcohol, and the fast-paced lifestyle. The mind itself adapts over years to center everything on the drug and the drink. It's a life of self-destruction. Maybe some of you here can relate to that, that who cares attitude. I've lived that. But it was around 2008 and 2009 that I started realizing that I had a serious drug problem. During that time, I attended probably 10 different rehabs, detoxes, and mental hospital programs designed to help people get clean and sober. But nothing was working, and I really did try. But I, was, I would always go back to that old life. That is one of the worst feelings when you can't seem to break out of the cycle. You know what cycle I'm referring to, many of you. Start off, you use the drug, Maybe because you're sad or things aren't going good, good in your life, or maybe because things are going great in your life. And then you realize for, after a while you're addicted. And then maybe you seek help or, or you go to treatment. You get clean. You start go, going to 12-step groups. You start staying sober. But then that old fear creeps in, that sadness, that, that depression. And it's scary. <coughs> and eventually it leads you back to that drug and the cycle repeats. You use the drug. You realize again you're addicted. You, you, you start to want to change and just over and over and over. And the cycle repeats. Several times after this I attempted suicide, laying down in a road at night hoping a car would hit me. But I couldn't even get dying right. To break free from me after 12 years of addiction self-destruction, hatred, bitterness, and suicidal desire was not only a long shot, but it had become impossible. What I needed was a turning point, a vital awakening, but not only that, I needed a miracle. But I had stopped believing one was possible. Have you ever lost hope completely and cast it aside? Have you? So escape seemed hopeless. Yet there were people in my life who were praying for me. There were people in my life encouraging me. And there was my grandfather who handed me my first Bible. As I wandered the streets, I read from this Bible, this ancient text that some said was the very word of God. Did I believe that? Not really but I knew I needed something. And something was drawing me to that message. I read about Jesus Christ and how he said to his disciples, to those who doubted him, to those who needed help, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he said to the downtrodden, the broken, come to me and I will give you rest. Having given up all hope, one night, sick and tired of being sick and tired, day in and day out, I fell down on the ground in front of the fireplace, and I cried out to one name, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crying out, Jesus, help me. And I believed that this living Savior could do just that. I dared to believe, and the impossible became possible. When I decided that enough was enough and realized my need for something greater, I set out on a new journey. Everything changed in my life. 
So I mapped out a plan of action for the future, finding myself with new strength to tackle the challenges ahead. I started attending recovery groups eight to ten times a week. I got a good sponsor to help me grow in recovery. I tackled my issues head on with addiction, with anxiety, with self-destruction, and with depression. I must have read dozens of books and did workbooks on healing from mental health issues. I was on a mission. I took the credits I'd scraped together at the UW and NTC and transferred to Liberty University, where in 2015, I graduated magna cum laude with an associate's degree in interdisciplinary studies and a bachelor's of religion with an emphasis in Christian counseling. I knew I wanted to be a minister to dedicate my life to serving those in need. And a door opened to the Salvation Army. And I started working at the TLC just down the road. I worked there for over a year. And for that reason, I know many of you who are here. I know Ed Wilson. I, I know L L Lieutenant uh, Jacob and Melinda Tripp. I know the staff at NTC, the Goal Lab. And I know many of you from the shelter. And what you have here with my dad with the trips and the shelter staff is something very, very special. This connection between the Salvation Army and NTC is a blessed one, a union between education and faith to help those with great struggles rise above and achieve their goals. Outposts of hope like the NTC Learning Center are where people like you and me find hope. The hope we had left behind years ago burst to life once again. In a little classroom, hopes and dreams are born anew in the fires of hard work, determination, and perseverance. We find those special people in our lives, like my dad, who refuse to put us down, but take the radical action of believing in us. And they encourage us. And we find that when they believe in us, we can come to believe in ourselves. There will be many difficulties along the way, graduates, but if we allow hope to be birthed in our souls, we can see ourselves fulfill our potentials. Graduates, my message to you is this. One, believe there is hope, even after all you've been through then persevere through every obstacle. Fight for your new life. And three, with your new life, hit the ground running. Thank you so much, and we all believe in you.